All right, there's one other thing that I missed yesterday that I wanted to go back and cover. All right, so one thing that I wanted to talk about was import address table hooking, and I'll show you the magic act before I go and explain it to you. <clears throat> but what I'm going to claim is basically if the attacker has done DLL injection and they're in the same memory space as your process, we've got this import address table, and we know that that holds pointers to all these functions that a given process wants to, wants to call. And so uh, if the attacker can manipulate this import address table so that it calls the attacker instead of calling the original function, then he can either monitor stuff like that API monitoring that we saw in the malware class, or he can, like I said yesterday, slice, uh, basically filter results, right? So he gets the results of the list of processes and filters them out. So context of task manager. I probably have too much stuff that's incriminating in this VM. <clears throat> all right. So task manager, right, it gets a list of all the running processes. Right now we can see that calc.exe is showing up just fine. Calc is here. And so how task manager does this is it calls the function NT query system information. When it calls that function, it gets back just a list of here's all of the processes that are running right now. The kernel just told it who's running. Right? <coughs> So this is normal task manager calling normal anti-query system information. And if I then install an import address table attack, and I'm just going to say, look, magic trick, you know, installed import address table attack, <coughs> runs task manager again, and now task manager doesn't have calc.exe anymore. Because that little .reg file that I set, it just basically set a registry entry so that with this registry entry set, my DLL will be loaded into all the new processes that start up. So I just started task manager. My DLL, my attacker DLL, got ins inserted into the memory space of task manager. And the first thing that DLL does when it runs is it goes and it finds the process that it's inside of its memory space. It finds its import address table by parsing these data structures that we've been talking about throughout the class. You know, it goes to the DOS header, goes to the NT header, goes to the data directory, goes to the import address table, finds the thing for NTOS or NT query system information. And then it takes and it replaces that pointer with a pointer to itself. And so because it can do that, it then, you know, takes and filters out the results of this, uh, this call to that function. So that's that magic. I'm going to show you a picture for that in a second. And yes, okay, good. We're not at the virus lab yet, so we're good for now. So that only works, you have to restart the task manager in order to... No, it. it can actually work on, on demand as well. So I did this just using a way that doesn't do like on-demand DLL injection. It just does simple load time DLL injection. But I could have used other programs that like will just force inject a DLL into the thing. So I think in the malware class you showed how malware would like use, you know, uh, we use create remote thread and stuff like that to force load library to be called in the process, and then that load library would load the malicious DLL, which could then do this DLL, um, this import address table hijacking. So picture-wise, what I was just showing basically is something like this. You've got a normal program calling a normal DLL. So this would be task manager, and this would be calling NTDLL, for instance. We showed before. You know, how does the call actually look? Well, it calls and it uses square brackets to look something up out of a table. This table says, you know, 40112C, that's just some function. Here it's NT query system information. And so when it does that, this calls to some function, goes over here, runs whatever code, and then when that code's done, it comes back. So when we've got an attacker in here, what he does is he takes and he fills in the pointer that's inside the import address table with a pointer to his code. And so it calls his code instead. So NT query system information called attacker's NT query system information. He calls the original NT query system information because he doesn't know how to get the list of processes. He just says, I'm going to get that from the place you would have originally gotten it. But once he has that list, once he's passed the list of here's you know, command.exe, here's the explorer.exe, here's calc.exe, he says, oh, calc, I don't want to show that. 
I'll remove that from the list, and then I'll pass it back to the guy who thought that he just called the original NT query system information. So, so in the rootkits class, we call this sort of like host based man in the middle because you're basically doing this hooking and redirecting it so that it goes through you so that you can either monitor or manipulate the results coming back. So that's what I didn't cover yesterday because I didn't have my VM set up and ready to go. But all it is basically is the attacker comes in, winds his way to the import address table and changes out those function pointers with his function pointers. All right. Any questions about that?